Hey, what's going on guys? John here, and today I wanted to do a video review for the Nakamachi surround sound system. Now, um, there's many variations of this sound system, and after doing a little bit of research and digging, um, you know, I kind of debated, I guess, against really a couple things. First off being, do I get a sound bar that is actually the same brand as the TV that I have? Now, in this case, this is a 2019 LG OLED TV. Um, I previously had another LG TV, and when I bought the Nakamachi, um, I was really debating, you know, do I go out and buy an LG soundbar, have something that's just really going to ultimately be compatible with the TV, not really give me any issues. But after doing a lot of research, reading a lot of reviews, seeing the really positive things that people had to say about this soundbar, um, I decided to go with it. And um, so far, I am very, very happy with the results of it. So I'm going to go through in terms of like just some of the functionality. I'll do a demo of um, six underground. I'll actually play this and then I'll show you how I orientated my speaker setup. I'll walk you through the remote. Um, I'll walk you through some of the pieces on the soundbar itself. So let's actually go through, you know, what actually comes with this and um, some of the variations you could get if you decide to pick this up. So the first thing I want to mention is that um, I decided to go with this particular model, which comes with two separate subwoofers. You can actually see there is one, two subwoofers. Now, normally with most soundbar setups, you're only going to have a single subwoofer. And there was a lot of um, content in their marketing that really talked about, you know, you just absolutely need that second um, subwoofer. And I decided, you know, why don't I just go with that upgrade? It's a little bit more money, but honestly, definitely worthwhile um, now that I've actually had them. And you guys will get kind of a little demo of that. It probably won't be as good as being in the room, but you'll get a good example of how it works. Um, so the nice thing about these units is they are fairly large. Um, in the back here, you have a specific color-coded wire. So um, there's a USB port here in the back, an LED light to indicate whether they're on. You've got your typical flip switch that you'd see on like, you know, most power units and then just a plug. So each of these do need to be powered with their own plug. And then this is basically the rear right speaker um, plug that then gets plugged in. So um, the nice thing about these is they actually wirelessly connect to one another. So once it's powered on, each subwoofer will connect to one another. You don't, you don't have to wire them together. The only thing you have to have is the wire uh, for the power and the actual wire for the rear um, subwoofer speakers. Now, one thing that I did consider is, you know, looking at some of these sound systems that have like wireless rear speakers. Now in this new home I moved into, we actually have the family room here set up in a basement and luckily we have a drop ceiling. So I've actually run the wire up the wall. I need to kind of tidy this up, but it actually runs all down this beam. And then I actually drop it through the drop ceiling and I've got it mounted over here um, on this side. And then same thing with the other speaker on this side. And the wire runs all the way down, down the wall and basically into um, this left side speaker. So same thing, you have a color coded uh, red plug power LED light that it's on and then um, pretty much the same deal on each side. So you do want to make sure that if you're going to get these you've got somewhere that you can set up both as you can see we do have plenty of space on both sides but you might be in a situation where maybe these aren't going to work um, i don't really recommend putting them on like something like if you're going to be storing it on like another um you know like in my case i've got this whole tv stand like you wouldn't want to be putting it inside of a tv stand or something like that or maybe in front of it i just don't really think it's going to look very good aesthetically so in this case you probably would want a similar setup to like what i have here now going over the soundbar itself one thing i will note is that this is fairly large and kind of a slight slight con is that you can see if i move back a little bit it does come up almost a little bit um, into the tv itself so one thing to keep in mind is that whether not you set this up like in my case if i really wanted to i could maybe bring the unit down below and like maybe store it here which it would actually fit but i just decided you know it's not really blocking too much of the tv it's not a big deal but this is a lot bigger than the previous soundbar that i had so it's very very long very large unit you just want to make sure that you've got a really nice big tv stand that's going to accommodate it now in terms of settings um you've got your basic power here um, I believe this is an exit and then you've got demo and then pretty much, um, you know, p turning up your volume. Now for connectivity, um, we'll flip this over and I'll kind of give a quick rundown of this. Um, first thing first is you do have your mounting screws here. So if you do want to mount this to a wall, you've got both one screw there 
and another screw here. Your power plugs in here in the back right. Um, if you do have like cats or animals that maybe like like to jump up like we do, you do have to keep in mind I have had a couple instances where the cats have actually um, unplugged this or it's been very easy like if they knock it um, this will come undone but not really a big deal. In terms of connectivity you've got on the back a coax, an aux, a USB and an optical out on the right side and then over here on the left side you have four um, display ports. Now one of these is going to work as what's called an arc port. So usually on the back of your TV you're going to have what's called the, um, the, in fact actually these aren't display port, I'm sorry, they're HDMI ports. Um, you're going to have uh, an arc HDMI out and what that allows you to do is basically kind of extend the HDMI ports into this entire unit. So in my case, um, we'll use this as an example, and this is something I really didn't understand when I was buying this, is if you come back here, we have, um, if you look, it's a little bit tough to read it. I probably can't get it to zoom in, the camera isn't focusing, but this basically says HDMI in, number two, and then it says arc. So this is my HDMI one, this is my HDMI two, and then I have my HDMI three on this particular TV, and then this is a USB in at the bottom. So we basically have three HDMI ports that we can be using, and in this case, the second one is our arc. So what this allows me to do is basically have this HDMI cord run into the arc port on the Nakamachi, and then at that point, um, I'm able to, on the Nakamachi unit, shift any of the settings from HDMI one through four, and utilize any of the devices plugged into the unit itself. And this will allow me to have the soundbar capabilities of utilizing the soundbar if I've got, for example, an Xbox or an Nvidia Shield or a PlayStation 4, um, any other unit that you're plugging into this. So um, as I switch between each unit, it's not only gonna bring the sound of the Nakamachi into the TV, into the unit, um, but it will also bring the picture through as well because it's HDMI. Um, so yeah, I haven't really had too many issues with this. You can see sometimes it can be a little bit tight getting the cords in here. I do have a couple, like this one's aftermarket and these are just kind of standard. I've got the Nintendo Switch one here and um, really not too, too many issues plugging these in or them coming loose, anything like that. So not really a problem. I'll go over the remote and then I'll do a demo for you guys to kind of hear it. Um, let me grab the remote here. So it's a fairly good size remote. Um, you have uh, basically your mute button here, power. Um, you've got all your Bluetooth USB mode settings. Here you can set the different inputs. So if I want to go to the HDMI arc for regular TV, I can do that. And then let's say two is my PlayStation. I can flip over to that. Then you've got all your sound settings for optical, aux, USB settings. Um, you've got system memory. You have your different um, settings between types of sound, so music, movies, or games. Um, and then you've got different settings here for like DSP. You can also do the room size settings. So if I switch between this, for example, you can go between, uh, it says SSE3. So this will basically change the surround sound uh, settings based on what I choose. And then you have setup settings, which again, will all display in this LED that's right in the front. Um, you can do info to kind of see what's going on in terms of the connection. So right now you can see it's scrolling Dolby, um, um, Dolby D plus, which is basically the output of the current sound. And you can also see it's connected through arc. We can also adjust our base. So if we want, I can go up to base, like I'll maybe go up to four, but this will go really high. I mean, you don't even have to have this high at all to have the effect. You can also change the room size. So if in my case, you know, maybe this is a pretty large size room, but I'm not, you know, putting the speakers too, too far behind me. I can change between large, um, small or medium sized rooms. I probably would say this is about a medium. You can adjust the display and then you also have all of your other settings here at the bottom for like different surround sound, um, getting extra output out of the speakers um, in the rear, things like that. Um, and then your volume. Now, the nice thing about connecting through ARC is in my case, if you have, um, you know, in this case, this is the basic um, LG remote, I can actually control the volume for the ARC unit. We're not going to demo the sound quite yet, but I can control the volume on my actual LG remote and it's going to go right through the Nakamachi unit. So that was something I was, you know, concerned about because obviously it is a little bit of a pain to be using all these extra remotes. So most oftentimes, if you've got all your settings set up on your remote, you can go back and actually just use the regular LG remote, get Netflix going, all the regular functionality that you want. And then anytime you're 
really at that point just going to be changing your volume and you know turning the unit on um, i haven't really had too many problems switching between like inputs but sometimes the unit does get a little bit clunky on me where you might have to like power it down and power it back up another problem that i've run into which can be finicky is that sometimes the hdmi cables if you have a poor quality cable um, you might have trouble getting things to connect but that's probably more the cable in of itself and then of course um, we have cats that love to chew on them so that's another fun ordeal just another <laughs> fun troubleshooting thing to deal with but overall these work really nice so i'm going to demo this now i'm sure you guys are waiting to hear the sound after watching this but i wanted to get through all the good details first and just kind of go through the functionality um what you are now going to be seeing is six underground which is on netflix this is a dolby atmos film so i have this set up um, where you're going to basically get the best sound output you could possibly get from dolby um, in terms of what this uh, speaker can actually provide. I found that a lot of films, things like that, don't actually provide that output, but this particular movie does. So I'm already 15 minutes in, but this is a car scene. We'll play it for like 30 seconds to a minute and um, give you guys an idea of how it sounds. And I might even play around with the settings as well. Gun, 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 gun. So these speakers come in pretty well. You can really hear the music and a lot of the sound effects. Glad you're on the team. Me too. So yeah, it gets pretty loud. Um, I'm not gonna go super crazy here with the film, but I um, wanted to give you guys an idea. It's a very, very nice sound, so sound system. Um, I'm very happy with the unit. Um, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. If you are looking for something like this, of this caliber, I definitely think you can't go wrong with it. If you guys decide to pick it up, I will leave a link below where you can grab it on Amazon. You guys will pay the same, but um, I will earn a small commission if you decide to pick it up through my link, and I definitely appreciate that. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the review.